Hello, vinyl community. It's Bill here again. And today I'm going to do another in the series, Random Records and Music Ephemera. And this is number seven in the series. So I hope you enjoy. So let's start off by saying, it's amazing what you find when you're looking for something else. I was having a, a rummage in a uh, filing cabinet that I have in my garage. Yeah, the car doesn't go into the garage, but other things go in the garage. Things tend to go up into the loft initially, and then later on they will make their way to the garage and then to the recycling center. Or, yeah, just the dump. So, I was looking for some other items and I came across some music magazines or newspapers. So this one is the Record Mirror and it's ACDC exclusive interview, LP review and tour details. And the LP that they're going to review is of course Back in Black and there's a photo of Angus Young and Brian Johnson inside here next to a photo of Pauline from the selector that is about ACDC back and it says ACDC have now confirmed all the dates for their British tour with the first with new lead singer Brian Johnson. I think they were going to be playing the Glasgow Apollo on the November the 1st and 2nd. I think I saw them play the Glasgow Apollo uh, a couple of years later. Great, great venue and a great gig. And then, this is quite a clever cover, this actually. This is from the New Musical Express, and it's showing the who by numbers starts on page 23. So they've done something quite clever there with the, the numbers for John Entwistle's white jacket or white suit. And of course, this has got the late great Keith Moon, Roger Daltrey with his sort of mod haircut. And Pete Townsend in the background there. Now, inside, yeah, I've only kept some of the pages. There's a big sort of article, several page article on the who. And inside, there's all sorts of things about, uh, you know, the back catalogue of the who. And it's an article by the great Roy Carr as well. Really nice. Uh, I think that was the, the jacket sleeve for Happy Jack by The Who. And some nice photographs of the band as well. We've got the Who Sellout LP on track 612002. And it goes all the way up to, I think the predecessor to the Who by Numbers was Odds and Sods, which features the great uh, track, Put the Money Down, and great versions of Pure and Easy and Long Live Rock as well. So that's New Musical Express from 1976, cost a whole 15 pence. Although if to buy it uh, in the US it would have cost you 95 cents and Canadian 55 cents as well. So quite a clever way of uh, reflecting on the cover of the Who Buy Numbers. So yeah, I don't know, I've shown this uh, once or twice before, but uh, yes, I did do the Join the Dots. But uh, yeah, that's on the Polydor li label. Uh, Squeezebox was, a, I think, a top 10 hit, and uh, However Much I Booze, Slipkid, and 
Blue, Red and Grey is just a fantastic song, one of my favourites, and don't know if it's the same as the Beatles' White Album, but uh, yes, these were numbered, so I've got 17,058, so this is an original pressing of the Who by Numbers. I was uh, celebrating my wedding anniversary and I was in a place called Cullen and had a really nice stay at the uh, Seafield Arms Hotel in Cullen and inside the hotel they had a book celebrating Banffshire in the Queen's Platinum Jubilee and there was an article about the Beatles playing at Keith and at St Thomas's Hall in Keith. So I had to find out where this hall was and I used the sat nav to take me directly to it and I had to take some photos of the plaque. So I'll uh, show the plaque now. And a friend of mine said, oh, that's interesting because I shared it uh, on a WhatsApp group and he said years ago he'd seen a, a book about the Beatles in Scotland and he'd seen this in a supermarket near Aberdeen, looked through it and then didn't buy it and he regretted it ever since. So I thought right I'll have a look for this book Beatles in Scotland and found it on yeah that website named after an American river and yeah this is a you know somebody at a second-hand bookshop selling it but yeah it's got the Beatles in Scotland and I really like this I've always imagined uh, when I read about Johnny Gentle that he was in his 30s or 40s but yeah he was a, a rock and roller as well so that's a photo of a young George Harrison on stage in Alloa with Johnny Gentle, uh, the singer. Because that plaque that's uh, in the, the town of Keith, Johnny Gentle was the, the singer on that tour. And yeah, there was a different drummer. I was pre-Ringo. So, Something else to show you that uh, this is a record, uh, a cover of the Daily Record, which is like a Scottish tabloid, and this is the front pages of the newspaper on the day after, maybe two days after, John Lennon was murdered. And there's the, the photo from Double Fantasy and then a photo of Mark Chapman from his college year book present. And I just shot John Lennon smirking killer boasts of his crime. And that's Yoko at the hospital. Why John Lennon loved New York and then the advert this is you know cost of living is on the go here we have a can of coca-cola for 17 pence and a round trees jelly for 11 and a half pence and you could get uh 75 centiliters of Hague whiskey for £5.19. What else have we got? Bachelor's processed peas for 11 and a half pence. So that's the, the front cover on 10th of December 1980. 12 pence for the, the newspaper. And this is the cover of Double Fantasy, which was featured in that newspaper front page, and then the back page. I'm not sure if 
that's outside the Dakota building or not. But yeah, we've got all the lyrics. There's some great tunes on here, such as Beautiful Boys, Watching the Wheels, and Woman. And this is uh, an interesting book by James Patterson. He seems to co-write or work with collab collaborators, but uh, this book is actually entitled The Last Days of John Lennon which maybe isn't what, you know, it doesn't describe what's in the book because you get a good history of uh, John Lennon and the Beatles and interspersed there are uh, chapters about Mark Chapman coming to New York. I'm only sort of halfway through the book, but I believe as you get closer to the end of the book, there's more about Mark Chapman and his stalking of John Lennon before he actually does that atrocious deed. And Mark Chapman was the, the killer, or Mark David Chapman. I don't know if you've ever seen this book. It's called Letters of Note, Corresponding Deserving of a Correspondence Deserving of a Wider Audience. And Inside this, there's a thing about John Lennon signed my album. And there's the letter that Mark Chapman has sent to a memorabilia expert. And he says, uh, on December the 8th, 1980, I shot and killed John Lennon. Before this, earlier in the afternoon, I had asked him to sign his double fantasy album. He did this also signing the date 1980. I then placed this album behind the security guards booth where it was found after my arrest. I have tried unsuccessfully for years and two attorneys to get this item back, seeking to place it at auction and donating the money, money to a children's charity. I felt it was the least I could do. Now, is there any way to assess the value of an item such as this? And he, he goes on to say he's interested in holograph material by Stephen King or any J.D. Salinger letters available. And yeah, Mark Chapman's signature is on the letter. I find that quite disturbing, actually, that he he's still trying to uh, get attention uh, from the fact that he's murdered John Lennon. So let's move on to some happier things. And I'll show some more records. Uh, this one's called Strutting by Dr. Strutt. And the guitar on this by Tim Weston is great. The reason I bought this was the, the title track, Strutting, is the theme tune to, or was the theme tune to the Alexis Corner Blues Show on Radio One. I think it was on a Sunday evening and Alexis Corner used to play what he called 50-50 records. So 50% music and 50% the scratch or the hiss on the record. But yeah, you used to love that show. And yeah, Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee, Robert Johnson, Alexis Corner would uh, play all these guys, uh, 78s on the radio. But uh, yeah, this is a, a really highly recommended album. I think there was a, a thread of albums that not many people own. Maybe this is one of them. And a lady that I saw in concert a few times said uh, Joan Arma Trading. And this is, uh, well, maybe uh, a reference back to the Beano album. Uh, 
No, I think this is Dennis the Menace and her comics. And yeah. This uh, has got uh, To the Limit and Barefoot and Pregnant from the bottom to the top from 1978. Really nice album. So yeah, this is going on at the same time as Punk and New Wave. So singer-songwriters still hold their own. 1980 and Duke by Genesis. I haven't shown this one very much. I like the the graphics at the time were quite cutting edge, but yeah, I think we've seen this style of uh, illustration for a, a long time now. And yeah, the big hit on this was, of course, Turn It On Again. And speaking of big hit, hits, Human League and Dare. And We've got uh, Love Action and Don't You Want Me. Pearl Oakley, yeah. Um, yeah. A nice picture in her sleeve. And you can see the labels there. On Virgin Records and this was one of the big albums of 1980. And then I want to go back in time and to quote Mott the Hoople, the golden age of rock and roll. So this is uh, my speciality records, but uh, this is from a series of two records. This is how it all began, volume one. And you maybe guess what the, the next record I shall show will be entitled. But yeah, this has got uh, some great gospel on it uh, with the swan silver tones. We've got John Lee Hooker, Don't Trust Nobody. Is that a double negative? So you trust everybody? Not sure. And Mercy D doing One Room Country Shack. Did Mose Allison do that? One Room Country Ch Shack was uh, written by Mercy D. Walton. And Mercy D is the, the one that's uh, singing on this. And then there's City Blues with Roy Milton's R.M. Blues. And then we've got Ballads with Percy Mayfield and Jump and Boogie with Roy Milton doing the Hucklebuck. Now, was there not a band that uh, featured in the UK's Eurovision? who did a cover of The Huckleback. So that's volume one of This Is How It All Began. And then this is, this is How It All Began, volume two. And look at that for a list of uh, great songs, all on the speciality record label, where we've got uh, Tutti Fruity and Keep A Knocking by little by little richard and art neville doing chip dooky do larry williams boney maroney and lights out all these tracks are excellent so look out for this one uh, you might see it in your sec second hand shop or maybe thrift shop charity shop. If you see it, pick it up. Highly recommended. I, I'd say that not, I haven't seen this very often in the vinyl community, and I've seen this one less often. So records that not many people have, perhaps this one. So I hope you enjoyed this edition of Random Records and Music Ephemera. 
Be back soon. Bye, Josiah.